Okay, so I need to do the crystals. And the crystals, the most important thing about crystals is that you have to know the pH. Um, because some of them look very similar. So you need to know pH whether to be able to determine whether it's um, one or the other. So some things only show up in acidic urine. Some things only show up in alkaline urine. So that's a very important thing to understand is if you don't know the pH, you can't really identify some crystals. <clears throat> so a lot of crystals that we find in the urine sediment are not pathogenic. So they're not clinically significant. They're normal. They're things that people um, make regularly. So on the acidic side which is less than seven we have our amorphous urates our urates which are uric acid crystals and then the calcium oxalate crystals or calcium oxalic acid okay um on the alkaline side which is above seven you have amorphous phosphates triple phosphates calcium phosphate and or carbonate and then ammonium biurate okay so this is the only urate that is in the alkaline side um and they only come when they only show up when it's been sitting the urine's been sitting for an excessively long time so guess what we already know that should be an alkaline ph right okay so here we go i'm showing you the difference look out amorphous urates and amorphous phosphates look very similar microscopically um, what you find in practice is on the macroscopic examination of your urine when you're checking for color and clarity you might see um, pink cloudiness in an acidic urine and that would be due to the urorerythrin right um, and we can clear those by heating it back up to uh, body temperature, heating it up a um, and then they'll dissolve. The amorphous phosphates will not dissolve with heat. They're white and cloudy. Um, and what happens is, so you have a cloudy urine that looks white. It doesn't have that pink tint to it. The pH is above seven. Um, but if you need to dissolve those amorphous crystals, then you have to use uh, acetic acid solution. But when you do that, it will also lyse any red cells that you have. So you want to make sure that you can identify any red cells. Make sure that your pad is clear of reds um, so that your your blood on the dipstick was negative before you dissolve them or you have two different microscopics that you're doing one that's looking for red cells and counting them and one that you clear out the amorphous phosphates and look for everything else besides the red cells okay um <clears throat> uric acids uric acid crystals can look like a whole bunch of different things just so you know um they typically have a rhomboid shape to them. So you see the, the rhombuses here. Um, so, but sometimes these things almost look like hexagons, but they are not. They are like oval with pointed ends. They kind of look like a football. Um, I gave you that one because that, I give you that picture because it's really a unique shape to the uric acids you don't see it very often you see more of these the the rhomboid shapes and the rhomboid shapes as you can see can clump up and form rosettes and all different kinds of structures they tend to take on or have a yellowish tint to them okay and uric acid crystals are found in acidic urine it's amazing okay um Triple phosphate crystals actually are prism shaped, okay? And that's why when we look at them, they look like envelopes. Um, so they have the 
weird folds, right? Those folds are not really folds. Those are the lines of the other side. You're looking at the flat side, the bottom, the flat bottom of this crystal. And then this line would be the tippy top of the crystal. And these are the ends. Um, <clears throat> so that's why they end up with like little envelope shapes to them. Uh, sometimes all you can see is the rectangle. And when you, all you see is the rectangle, first thing you have to do is look at it and go, wait, what's the pH? Because if it's a rectangle, it could have been a rhomboid of some sort, right? If there's craziness that goes on. So triple phosphate crystals. Now, struvite crystals are ammonium magnesium phosphate crystals, and they um, are not terribly common in humans. Okay, uh, we don't see them clinically very often in humans. Uh, we do see them quite often in dogs. Um, dogs have a lot of struvite crystals. Um, so that's, it's an interesting thing to, to learn. Um, but so they can look like triple phosphates. They're you know, so, but again, it's, a, they're both normal crystals. So is it going to hurt to call it a triple phosphate crystal if it's really a struvite crystal? No, not really. Okay. Um, let's see. Calcium oxalate crystal, uh, less than seven. Again, these are oxalate is oxalic acid, which makes it acidic urine. Okay. These most commonly look like squares with X's. Okay, that's what they look like. Squares with X's or kites, right? Without tails. Um, they can come in little teensy, tiny, weensy, little, itty, bitty, tiny little crystals. Or they can be humongous. And they can get together and make all kinds of weird shapes. Um, these are the most common causative agent of kidney stones, so they tend to crystallize and come together quite readily. Um, this is the dihydrate form. These over here are the monohydrate form. So the monohydrate form tends to look like, as they say, dumbbell shaped. Um, but they can be some really weird looking ovally type discoid thing too. Uh, we would not know what these are typically by looking at them. We'd be like, I think that might be some kind of crystal. And then you ask somebody else who maybe has been around for 50,000 years um, what that is. And then you go searching for everything else in there to see if you can figure out what in the world it is. Right. Hopefully you come up with one teeny tiny little X somewhere. And that happens quite a lot. Um, calcium phosphate or calcium carbonate crystals. Um, calcium phosphate crystals, they're big jagged pieces of stuff. Um, you're going to see some more of these things that look similar uh, later, but they're much smaller. These are gigantic. Okay, these are your white cells. These are gigantic. Okay, they're like epithelial cell would not cover this whole piece right here. So um, they're gigantic. Calcium carbonate crystals, on the other hand, which kind of look like these things over here, right? But they're in alkaline pH. Um, they tend to... Um, flatten out and look a little discoid at times. Okay. Sometimes you can get some really strange shapes out of these too. So if, but mostly we're looking for these like dumbbelly type deals. Okay. This is what we see most commonly with the calcium carbonates. Sometimes we see these not very frequently. All right, ammonium bierite, again, 
biuric, biuric acid, acid. Oh wait, it's not acid. Remember, because it's biurate. Okay, biurate is biuric acids. Biuric acids. We're now going to the alkaline side. Okay, so it's the only urate crystal that is found in alkaline urine. Guarantee that shows up somewhere on your uh, registry or something. This indicates very old urine that has been sitting for a, quite some time. They call these things thorny apples. That's what they call them. They look like um, some crazy alien creature coming after you. Um, <laughs> But that's, they, they have like a, a bulbous center with arm-like projections or spicules coming out of it. Um, they're always dark colored. They take on like a yellowy brown color. Uh, and the, of course, it's always in alkaline urine. Okay. Those are all the normal ones. Now, now we're getting into the clinically significant crystals which mean that there's something going on with the patient somehow some way okay so all clinically significant crystals are found in either neutral urine or acidic urine they don't go above seven okay some crystals are significant because they indicate that the patient has had some sort of treatment or procedure but that doesn't necessarily mean Oh my gosh they're gonna die because they have these crystals okay that's not what clinically significant means significant in the clinical diagnosis the clinical treatment the clinical whereabouts where's our patient what's his status how are we progressing with it okay. so cysteine crystals um are hexagonal crystals they have six sides they may not all be even sides but they are six sides um they have a hexagon shape to them they look very fragile and can be a little refractile the cysteine crystals uh <clears throat> they they can be thick, they can be thin. Most of them tend to look fragile. They're, they're colorless, typically. Um, what's significant about this is that it's an, it's an inherited disease. It's cystinuria. And what happens is these people tend to have kidney stones at very young ages. So they, can, they tend to form kidney stones when they're younger. Most people don't get, have their first kidney stone until they're... 20 or older these people may have them when they're in their teens when they're like 8 or 10 so you know they they tend to clump up and cause um urolithiasis so you want to make sure that you have this under control they know that they have the condition okay because it's a metabolic disorder and they've been screened Cholesterol, okay, cholesterol um, crystals tend to appear due to people that have nephrotic syndrome um, or they have um, some sort of a disorder that produces the lipid urea, so they have a lot of lipids in their urine. Um, so typically you'll see cholesterol crystals in conjunction with fatty casts um, or oval fat bodies. Uh, the, the cool thing about cholesterol crystals is they all have notches on them somewhere. So you see a little notched edges on them. They don't have all perfect, um, shapes to them. So they have some sort of a notch on them somewhere. These things polarize. So they have that, um, by the, the, the biorefringence when you put on the polarizing filter. So they turn multicolors and look all pretty and wonderful. Okay. 
So remember, nephrotic syndrome or lots of lipids in the urine. Bilirubin crystals. Um, bilirubin crystals can be kind of interesting. One, they're bright yellow. They're or they're amber color. They're that yellowy orange brown color that just is like I remember that urine. That urine was bilirubin color, right? We we'll get there. You'll get there eventually. You'll see bilirubin in urine, and you'll be like, yep. I know that color. Yep, I know that color. Pretty much it's the color of these crystals. Um, so they get very, very dark yellow, light brown color. Um, so the bilirubin crystals are associated typically with bilirubin um, buildup, which happens because of the liver disease that you may be experiencing or your patient, hopefully, is the one that's experiencing it, not you. Um, so too much bilirubin, we'll see it um, in the urine as well, and they can, they can build up crystals. And when do we see bilirubin crystals? What pH? Acidic pH, because all clinically significant crystals are found in acidic. Or neutral pH. Go with that acidic. All right, leucine crystals also <clears throat> um, can be found with the li with liver disease, um, or they can also indicate maple syrup urine disease, which you guys have we heard about before. Um, so. Leucine crystals and tyrosine crystals tend to be found together. Um, so it's important that if you're seeing one that you're looking for the other as well. Uh, I liken these leucine crystals to um, cross sections of wood. So they tend to have multiple layers striations on them so they have multiple layers and they you know the center is there and then you have these these layers around them and then a lot of them not this one but a lot of them have these wheel spoke look looking striations that go from the center out to the outer edge so you can see them here they're pretty light on this one um but you can definitely see them in these guys you can see them on here um going out a little here a little there not as predominant or easily seen as on the pictures on the right and this one you can't really tell but it does look like the cross section of a of a piece of wood right the barks on the outside and then the inside has the like pithy part or wooden part it's that's how i learned how to id leucine crystals um the tyrosine crystals look like sheaves most of the time so they most of the time they look like this or this or this um where someone has taken a bunch of hay or needles and have clamped it together in the middle and put a like rubber band or, or something around it um to try to keep the bundle of needles together okay um sometimes we'll see them looking like this where it looks like a, a ball with a bunch of needles stuck in it all over the different surfaces all around the surface um, or a ball of needles but most of the time they're these the little sheaves of crystals again tyrosine and leucine you look for the two of them together okay now you're going to be seeing a bunch of different crystals coming up that look you're going to be like they look kind of the same they look kind of the same they look kind of the same yeah i know 
um, drug crystals tend to look kind of the same. Um, ampicillin crystals are typically finer crystals, but notice that like they still look like a crystal, not just a little, um, in this one anyway, not just a, like a little line, but these look like little lines. And these almost look like tyrosine crystals, right? So if you're seeing something that looks like this or looks like this, you need to look at your patient data. So is my patient in having liver failure? Do they have a high bilirubin? Do they have any other issues? There's the ALT, AST in, increase. Um, do, are they on antibiotic therapies? Hey, that would be an idea. Let's see if they have on, if they have antibiotics in their system. Oh yes, they're taking amoxicillin. Oh, there we go. Penicillin, penicillin crystals or ampicillin crystals. That would be it. Oh, they're on Bactrim. Look, sulfonamides, sulfa drugs. So these, again, can look very different. You have to sometimes look at the information on your patient to be able to determine what you are actually looking at. Radiographic dyes. Okay, radio opaque dye, tyrosine crystals, sulfonamide crystals. Look, a sheaf. I might think that it's tyrosine, but no, it's not because they are on antibiotic therapy and they have no liver disease. Like these are the things that you have to check out. Okay. Radiographic dyes, they can look like a bunch of different things, right? Check your specific gravity. Remember radiographic dyes are very heavy. So your specific gravity is going to be really high. Okay, done. Hopefully, um, y'all remember what I told you in the two-hour lecture when I did the cells and casts, because I'm not doing it again. Good luck. I'll see you next week.